everyone and welcome. This is Melissa Armo with the Stock Swoosh. And I wanted to do a snapshot here of one week of the Gap Options newsletter, the money that you could have made risking in the trades for this one week and advanced trader risk, which we'll talk about in a minute. You could have made $50,655. So I've called a lot of trades this year, quite frankly, over 700 trades on this newsletter uh, for the year. And so it's been a very, very active year. You can trade my newsletter and do these gap options with a small account or a large account. But I'm showing you here an advanced risk. What is an advanced risk? Around $8,000. Some trades are slightly less, some trades are slightly more, depending on the contract price. But this can give you some kind of an idea what to expect if you, in fact, want to sign up for the newsletter as far as results. So this is a chart here of the market. The week that I'm gonna go over with you here is the trades that expired this week, that moved this week in here. So it was the week of uh, Monday the 9th, the movement from here the 9th into the 13th. Okay, they were all the expiration dates of November 13th. And actually all these trades were puts. So there were 15 trades uh, within this week that expired November 13th. There were 11 winners, four losers, Win ratio was 73%, and the average return on investment was 89%, which is pretty good. I tell people between 50% and 100%, um, and there's times even, and this is not all the time, but there's times even you can hold something into the very last day and possibly make more. But I don't really suggest that if you're up a good amount before the expiration date, because you're always taking a chance. It has to be almost really well through the strike for a move like that the last day. So these were all trains the expiration date of the 13th and two are that i called the friday which is the friday right before that expire the 13th i i don't, I don't like to call trades on that exact day that ex, that expire that day so these are all within the expiration date of the 13th uh so here was the one from the friday early friday morning i called the 291 qqq puts again in the newsletter if you sign up for the newsletter you'll get the the newsletter was emailed to you. This was in the pre-market. It was the Q's 291 strike expiring then the following Friday. Again, I, I don't typically call them same day. Not that some trades can't move in the same day I call them. They can, whether it's a Friday or a Monday. But I, I like to give it a cushion. This was a put. So the cost of this was $5. And again, I suggest people take them when they receive the trade or within at least 15, 20 minutes of receiving the trade or half an hour at the most. If it hasn't moved, you can take it later, but you're really gonna need to pull up the chart if you don't take the trade initially. Any trades are called in the pre-market, obviously you'd look at taking at some point into the open. You cannot trade options in the pre-market. Cost was $5, 15 contracts, again, in advance risk was 7,500. Sold at 10, this is a nice trade. You can just put the order out to fill you for every trade at 50% return on investment, 100% return on investment, whatever you wanna do. I usually watch them because I'm watching my charts all day, but this was a risk of 7,500 and a profit of 7,500. Very, very nice move. Again, this was a put, which means you're, you're betting that the market's gonna move lower, okay? By market, I meant the cues there. Then we also did Amazon. We did this on Monday. Strike was 31.50. Amazon is expensive, but can move a lot. Expiry date was the 13th. Again, this was a put. Call this in the pre-market early. So I call these trades based on the gap. Cost was $48 for one contract. Make sure you size yourself right also when you're taking these trades. It's critical. Two contracts cost 9,600, sold at 140, profit $18,400, a really nice trade, almost 200% return investment. And again, I love trading these high flyers, even though they're expensive because they can have massive big moves like this, okay? And these are ones that you could do for a day, in, out, in, out, in, out, uh, which, which makes it really fun too. Great, great call there in the Amazon. I also called a second strike which I called a little bit later, notice the time. So let me go back here. 7.45 in the morning, I initially called the 3150s, then I called a higher strike at 8.15, 8.16, same day. So two, and notice I put the two in the, in the letter. 3200 strike, puts, Amazon, beautiful move. Cost of this was more, okay, because it was a higher strike, $73 for one, 
sold 185. What a nice move. $11,200 profit. One contract, you could have made that. I mean, one contract. Again, this is why these are so fun to trade. Return on investment, 153%. Beautiful. Just in Amazon alone was huge profits just this week. Netflix has been on my radar for some time. 9.47 in the morning on Monday, I called the 475 Netflixes. Okay. Again, expired the 13th. Again, a put. Cost of this wasn't cheap either, $11. But remember, Netflix is kind of expensive now. Eight contracts cost 8800 sold at 12 uh, This was one I held all week, waited for it to go. It didn't go uh, off into being negative, but it never went really right positive. So got out of it with a little bit of profit. Uh, I held it as long as I possibly could. And that's one of these ones you say, gosh, why didn't this go? Because the air didn't get blown up enough in the balloon. So it didn't go negative, but it didn't blow up like the Amazon where you see something go 100, 200%. And it's, it's rare that that occurs. The momentum was there in this. It just didn't blow up in the options chain. But got out of it with something. Netflix 480s was different, though. Again, notice this is 1220 on Monday. I called the 480s. See here, I called this one early, 475. I saw how it was moving, so the higher strike here ended up being a better trade. 675 for this, and this is because of the way that, this, that it's set up. So this actually cost less and was a higher strike, so this was a better trade, but it was a little bit later in the day. Sold for 1520, profit $10,140. 12 contracts cost 8100. Again, 125% return on investment. You can't beat that. So I will call a, a most of my trades in the pre-market, but sometimes I'll call them within the first hour of the day. And every once in a while, I'll call one a little bit later. That's why you have to be watching your email. So this was around 1220. Same day though, on Monday, when I saw what was happening, saw the sell-off. Again, this was a put. The Zoom was on Tuesday, the 10th, in the morning, 1017, called the 380 puts in the Zoom. Again, expired on Friday. Zoom moves very fast. Zoom is not cheap to trade either. But again, look at the price point. You could have done one contract for 1,000 or 1,100 bucks. Or if you did an advance for seven, was 81.90, sold at 20, profit 58.10. Return investment 71%, it's a good trade. And this moved really fast. And if you've ever traded any of these high flyers, this is how they are. Again, you're better off if you can't watch them putting a an order out just to fill you at 50%. You know, because if you can't watch it, sometimes these go and you could take a train and you could be up in it 50% like in five, 10, 15 minutes. I mean, that's literally what it can be, which which to me, I love, it's exciting. This was Tuesday too, I call the Facebook puts, the 267.50s, it expired again on Friday the 13th. Puts again, cost was four bucks, not bad for Facebook, 20 contracts, it was $8,000 risk. Sold 630, profit 4600, a nice trade. Some trades are big, some trades are medium, some trades are small. I said 50 to 100% you gotta be looking for, you know, for the profit margin, return investment 58%. And this did have a nice drop. Again, it was a short, short in Facebook this, this same Tuesday, called the SPY, 350 puts. Okay, a little bit in after the open here on that same morning. This was cheap, two bucks. 40 contracts, 8,000 was the risk for 40. 320 sold, 4,800, boom. 60% return on investment, out. Nice trade, get the move out, get the move out. Trading options about trading momentum and everything I do with my gap trades, which is how I'm calling, I'm calling all these trades based on my gap rating system. The 26 points that I teach in the Golden Gap course, that is how I'm making the picks, all right? And then, and then you gotta get the timing right. Gotta get the timing right in the trades. But you see most of these in the morning. Then that same morning, I called the Qs, 283 puts, again, expiring Friday, a little bit after the open here. 290 was the price, pretty good for the Qs at this price point. 30 contracts, cost 8,700, sold at 470, profit 5,400. Again, return on investment, 62%. And actually, let me go back to that day here since I have the spy chart in here. I'll just go back to that before I finish these other ones up. Show you what that day was here so here was the monday and again this is just the spy chart i didn't put all these charts in here it was too many but this closed here gap down here's the drop this also had another drop later in the week i just want to show you but this was this tuesday we're talking about okay now where was i 
here. Two eighty threes. Talked about that one. Netflix four sixty fives. I called very early in the morning on Tuesday. Again, expired Friday. Six was the price. Sold at nine forty. Profit four thousand eighty. Twelve contracts cost seventy two hundred. Fifty seven percent return investment. Netflix was one that, uh, you know, again, for six dollars, it's pretty reasonably priced for this for a six hundred four sixty five strike for this. Re really pretty reasonable. So you could have done one and paid six hundred dollars. So it was a nice trade. Fifty seven percent return investment. For me personally, the faster they go. The faster they go into to, to be profitable, whether it's 50% or 100%, I'm happy. Apple was a nice one again in the morning, in the pre-market, I called it. 115 puts expiring Friday. Can you imagine? We were shorting Apple. It worked. This was dirt, dirt cheap. Moved fast too. $1.20 was the cost, sold at 240. 70 contracts, risk was 8400 Profit, 8400 Just take it, boom, boom, boom. Nice move in Apple. And again, this was on the Tuesday morning. So just because you have a lot of time in something doesn't necessarily mean you hold it. When you get a move like this and you take something, and again, this was so cheap for Apple, and you can be make turn flip your money around, return investment, flip it, woo, like that, you get out. And this was the one I had called on the previous Friday too, the 348 spy strikes. This I lost him, but it was actually up a little bit. It was up a little bit. It was flat for a while. This is one I chose to hold because I thought it could go bigger. It never did. So I ended up losing this. It went bust. Um, and again, I could have gotten out of this with a little profit and I could have gotten out of this break even. I did not. Some people did profit in this trade. This was a loser for me, held into the Friday. Diamonds was another one on Tuesday morning, the 291 puts. This again, I could have got out of different points as well. Before this, it just never moved right for me. Never went to 100%, never went to 50%. Um, and it, so I, I gave it all the week that I could and ended up getting out of this with a loss. 353 spies, again, was the Tuesday morning too. Similar for this one as well. This was a loss. Return on investment zero for that one. And the BYND did not work. This really never ended up working at all. Uh, the Tuesday morning I called this, and this was a loser as well. So, uh, and sometimes the last day you can save a little bit in them. You can you can get out of them for 10, 20 cents, whatever, if you got about in the, in the morning. Uh, but I usually try to hold every trade to play out to be profitable, or it loses. So, very, very interesting times that we're trading in right now because we're seeing a lot of volatility. What pinpoints the volatility for me? It's the gap. I rate the gap using the 26-point rating system. That's how I'm making the picks. The last class for December 12th, uh, for, for 2020, is December 12th and 13th, if you want to learn my system. The class tuition is $69.99. I, in the, if you're on the newsletter, if you subscribe, you just get the trades. You're not gonna know how I call them, the rating, none of that, okay? If you wanna learn how I do it, you take the two-day class. It's online, you can be anywhere in the world and take it. If you just want to sign up for the newsletter, the annual price for one year of trades, which get emailed to you, is $69.99. These are the newsletters that get emailed to you. If you want to sign up for this, email me at melissaatthestockswish.com. That's a normal price. Now, I am doing some Christmas holiday sales for Black Friday that are good through November 29th. If you sign up for the class for December by November 29th, you will get the room and the newsletter free for one year, which is a fantastic deal because the newsletter is $69.99 alone. And the room is normally four grand a year on top of it with the class. The options newsletter, if you want to sign up for the newsletter, you get a discount, $1,000 off, and you also will get the Gap Options course free. That's a half day class. That is not where you learn the points, but you learn about how I'm managing the options, and it's a, it's a very good class. So two sales running. They expire November 29th. No exceptions. It won't go past it. You must sign up. It's Sunday. If you want to start getting the trades this week, though, the options are already for this week, then you'll sign up as soon as possible. Again, if you want the letter or the class, you can sign up right now and get on board. It has been a very, very interesting 2020, I will say that. And I'm really looking forward to what's going to happen into 2021. If you have questions about any of this, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. Have a great day, everyone.